Here we are. Hi. I always have trouble. I don't know why I have trouble. <laughs> That's okay. It's all good. I'm here now. I'm here You're now. Here. I, like, I don't know. I don't know. I know. I thought I had it figured out. I don't know why I have, yeah, issues that I have. Well, that's good. Okay, well, people are joining back in now. That's good. And so, so. I just got to say, kudos to you, Jeff, for sharing your story and your willingness to share the kind of the woo stuff that some people are very judgmental about. But yeah. the fact that you're willing to share, um, I just think it's phenomenal because really our goal um in any of us with out of the box gifts, as we can say, yeah. although I believe we all have, them. Um, yes. but has a, has a desire to share because it's about making it normal, for lack of a better word, right? Everybody yeah. has these abilities. Everybody has abilities beyond the five senses, and it's a matter of not being afraid of fear that's blocking this beautiful back and forth ability to communicate with, be it spirits, energy, mother nature. Uh, the cosmos, like there's so many things. And so I have to give you so much credit for being willing to stand up and talk about it. It's phenomenal. I, get I had anxiety again. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to like rush through and I'm trying to think and I'm like, oh my God. But I had, yeah, it's, uh, it needs to be talked about and I know it does. And that's why I have such a push and drive to do what I'm doing today is because that's why I know I'm still here, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Very cool. Sorry. So um, I guess I'll share a little bit about how it came about for me. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Okay. So um, it was pretty, like, there's so many different ways in which gifts and abilities can open up for people. So there really isn't one direct way or one specific how-to. It's about trying different things, working with things that work for you naturally, or trying on totally different new concepts. Because for me, it was really an evolution throughout my life. So, I mean, if I go back to about the age of five years old, I remember being able to feel spirit in my room. I couldn't see them, but I could feel them. I would go to sleep and have the blankets over my head with just a little breathing hole. Yeah. Because I was that if I opened my eyes, I would see somebody. Because I knew at any time there was at least a dozen people in my room at nighttime. So that used to really freak me out a lot. Um, and there wasn't really much for resources for me at the time to understand what was happening. So I had to just kind of get out of my crazy kid brain, right? Like, yeah. Oh, you know, when your imagination, right. Is what I had kind of told. And, yeah. um, so it wasn't until about the age of 15 that I actually saw my grandmother after she'd passed away and had a conversation with her. And then nothing really happened. And after that, because my anxiety get really high, is very common for um, those that are mediums also those yeah. that are empaths and that can perceive more than the regular five cents and to have anxiety but my yeah. really got a, and 17, i started um i started hearing and that sometimes is a tricky one because you don't always hear them audibly like a person yeah. talking to you sometimes you hear it inside your so by 17 i was like what's happening to me like either I'm crazy or something's going on and it was really hard to kind of differentiate between the two so my anxiety really peaked around 17 and uh, it was until I was about 21 that my sweet little really was a savior and that me realized that I wasn't uh, one where um I was doing laundry and heard a spirit down my hallway and look at me and I am you know yelling at the humanity terrified yeah. and, and they said turn and look at me and so I find so much fear turned and looked up I saw him standing at the end of the hallway which I realize now is one of the lifetime guides named Andre um, but the beautiful hat was right at the end of the hallway, looking up at him, meowing with her tail wagging. Yeah. And that realization for me was huge because I figured if she sees him, then I see him. And so for me, that was a real change point because I decided instead of being afraid and not believing what was happening, I was then going to learn everything. 
And once I made that commitment to learn, opening my mind, my heart up, uh, that everything really started to and from the be spirit, um, it was all kinds of spirits, and it just that was really. You're really bring. Oh, I see. yeah. Um, you're breaking up a bit. In and out. In and out. Yeah. I seen someone read it there, and I didn't know if it was my phone or not. But yeah, uh, yeah, you're breaking in and out. Am I? Well, that's just kind of not cool. Hold on. Oh. Let me see. Is that better now? Emma. Yeah. Is that better now? Yeah. Okay. Just let me know if I am breaking up again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it really was this evolution of learning that spirit actually is around us. And then the other thing was, and this has been a beautiful topic lately, was the worthiness. For me, was realizing I was worthy of being a medium. Because I remember I met with a medium one time um, in my early 20s because I needed to talk to someone who could explain what was happening to me. And he explained a lot of the things that I was experiencing, but I left there almost angry because I was like, I am not a medium. He is. I'm not. Right? No. And it was this piece of worthiness of that I can have these gifts. I can have these abilities just like everybody else can utilize them and have them. So it was a matter of me accepting it for myself. Yeah. Um, how's this better? Is it copy? Yeah. No, it was good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you know, I kind of opened up to learning everything I could, then I would have more spirits coming in at different times. And, and, uh, you know, we all have, we all have a lifetime guide or two, which is somebody that, that agrees to accompany us from the moment we're born to the moment we pass as a parallel on the other side. Right. So they are kind of yeah. like our, our, right. Throughout our, our lives. And they will help facilitate other bringing in other teachers to the journeys that we need to um, experience in our lifetimes and mm -hmm. so the thing is when some people are afraid that, you know if i open up to spirit i'm going to see everything they're going to show up in my face right away they're yeah. going to uh touch me or take over my body or all of those mm -hmm. kind of fears that people have and that's really not the case it's spirit knows that you're willing to open and when i reference spirit i mean family members that have passed, guardian angels, angel beings, name it. Um, when they were ready and open, they... Oh, you're didn't... cutting out again. <laughs> um, they really don't want to make us afraid. That's the... Right? They don't want to make us afraid. So, um, yeah. am I still choppy? No, you're good again now. <laughs> Okay, because I can always go move into the room if need be. Okay, I'll let you know if it happens again. Okay, if it happens again, then I'll move into the other room. Okay. Um, so, anyways, it was just it's just a matter of, of opening up and having guides and teachers come in at different times to help facilitate the journey. And they will unroll it for you, right? I mean, um, in your case, Jeff, I think things have happened a little bit faster than most, right? But mm -hmm. they will, they will, um, they will unroll it and unravel it in the timing which works with our beings and our level yes. of. Yeah. Like for me, it's like it couldn't happen fast enough. I've always wanted it, you know, and uh, yeah, but it's at your own pace as well for your inner self to be able to like catch up and learn and grow along with it, right? Yeah. Hey, so someone's saying if I use my headphones and they won't have, uh, there won't be feedback. Um, okay, yeah, tr well. try that. Okay, I'm just okay. gonna headphones. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that will fix it. <sighs> Thanks for pointing that out. I didn't know if it was just my phone from the wind blowing or not, but hopefully, that fixes that. So yeah, for I'm gonna give away um, I'm gonna give away a free session with uh, Jeanette, but I just need you to write your name in the comments because I'm gonna wait until Friday and I'm gonna scroll down and pick a name. 
and just share the video. So I'll check your page to see if you share the video and then we'll set you up for a free session with Jeanette. And normally, Jeanette, you're booked weeks, if not months in advance, right? For people to have even yeah. appointments. You're, you're very good yeah. at what you do and you're very well known for what you do. So thank you. I was just letting thank people you. know to share share the, the video and to uh, yeah. write their name in the comments here. And then I'm going to scroll through and pick on Friday. Absolutely. Um, okay, guys, so let me know how that works. If, is that yeah. better? Yeah. yeah? Okay, yeah. sorry about that. That's annoying. I know. Um, okay, so there was one thing I really wanted to um, expand on that you were already talking about, Jeff, is how um, feeling that energy and understanding where that energy is, like where spirit is. Because a lot of people ask, like, where is spirit, right? Like, yeah. where, where are they? And they really are around us, yet in a way not. Because if you think about it, we, li we live in 3D, right? We're in third yeah. dimensional reality. And spirit lives anywhere from fourth dimension up. So if we're talking angelic realms, that's like ninth dimension. And I don't know where it caps because I've only seen up to ninth dimension. So I can only speak of what I know, right, at this yes. time. Yeah. But um, what happens is spirit, they actually drop down from wherever they are. And like Jeff said, sometimes they are busy and we can't get a hold of them. But most of the time they can come forward. And so mm -hmm. they drop down into about a lower 4D dimension and a medium or anyone that's channeling basically has to up their vibrate into that kind of lower 4D or higher dimension, whatever they're comfortable with. And that's really the key. That's the secret. That's the magic behind it. It's frequency. Because, you know, I had asked Spirit this a long time ago. I said, how is it that, um, how do I do this? Because there's some mediums that use birth dates to get into someone's energy. Some mediums use uh, jewelry, a form of psychometry. They'll hold it and they'll feel the frequency of that person and connect in that way. Some look at a picture. And for me, it would just sometimes happen and sometimes not. And so it was all about frequency. And so what happens is when we are, like for you, for example, Jeff, when you're having a relaxed evening, your body is naturally in a higher frequency because you're not being stressed. You're not being taken down by anything that happened that day to lower your yeah. vibe. So you're yeah. in a higher vibe frequency. So it's more easy for them to come forward. Right. Yeah. It's normally for myself. Yes. Normally it's when I'm in bed, I'm relaxed. And then I, mm -hmm. I, I get headaches because I start using my third eye because my eyes are open and it's like my third eye. Yeah. I'm using that. So, mm -hmm. You know, it takes about five, ten minutes before I start seeing all the energy going around me and stuff, right? Like, I see a horse and a bird's always yeah. in my room at night. And, you know, it's yeah. crazy the things that I'm able to see, yeah. right? And that's it. That's it. It's however long it takes for you to come into yeah. that frequency. Like, before, when I first started doing readings, I'd have to meditate for a good half hour before I was ready to sit with somebody. Whereas yeah. now I'm quite used to that, so I can drop into that frequency within a few seconds. Right. But it's just practice. Yeah. So um, that's not for anyone to be intimidated because it is a form of practice to get used to the feelings and doing what you're doing, just like anything. Like right? a muscle. But, you're working the muscle at the gym. You need to practice it over and over to get it to grow. Exactly. And so really all you're doing in that meditation based on your intent. So for anyone that's watching and wants to connect, your intent alone will help you to connect with spirit. Right? So if your intent is, I wish to feel my uh, grandmother, right? Yeah. And you calm your body into a peaceful energy, your body will naturally raise its frequency so that the frequency of your grandmother can descend and then you guys create a match point. And in that yeah. match point is where the communication happens, whether it's clairvoyance, which is seeing, clairaudience, which is hearing, um, you know, the claircognizance, which is, you know, your clear knowing. There's there's so many ways in which it can be. There isn't one way that is better than another, but everybody will usually have one or two that is stronger. That's kind of their mainstay. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just based on frequency, however that is. So I would encourage people to try the different forms of getting into the energy, whether it be holding something um, or, um, you know, gems or crystals is another way to help up your frequency um, mm -hmm. you know, meditative music, setting an atmosphere, doing anything that's kind of a repeated ritual, so to speak, that gets yeah. you into that frequency is how you can connect with them. Yeah. A good thing that you got me to go to was the spiritualist uh, church that I go to. 
Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That you know, really like when you surround, me. yeah, when you surround yourself with like minded people, um, whether it be a spiritual church, whether it be a solid group of friends that are into energy, um, whatever your thing is, neither is wrong. But it's just yeah. being around like minded people. And in that case, many of them are mediums. So they're, they're understanding the tools in which to communicate and facilitate that. So that's a great learning opportunity for sure. Yeah. 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 So um, I just saw a question here where someone's asking, Ruth is asking, is it possible for someone to not know they're dead? I had an experience with a spirit that was hostile and I think she didn't know what I was doing in her house. Um, Yeah. You know, Sometimes this, oh my gosh, we could talk about this for hours. Um, sometimes depending on how people pass, they can, there can be such a shock that they're out of their body. Um, for example, I spoke to one person who uh, ran across the road to save his dog, but he got hit by a car. And so he popped out of his body so fast that it shocked him. And yeah. sometimes they're not ready to realize that they are in fact gone. They know something is different, but they're not quite ready. Um, but nine times out of 10, the only thing that's holding them back is a need to communicate something so that they can find that peace, right? It's usually the, the one important thing to know is that whenever anybody passes, they're never alone. Yeah. Whether their experience is darkness, they are still always surrounded by light for when they're ready to see it. So nobody yeah. is ever alone. So, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes there are some that don't quite realize they've passed, um, but there's always somebody waiting to facilitate them crossing over completely. Yeah. So. And that was like another, another lady, she had a question about, um, she had a spirit in, in their home. They had spirits in her home or a spirit harassing her children. Like her one son mm -hmm. is on the psych ward, off and yeah. on on the psych ward uh, yeah. for the last couple of years. And now it's like her daughter is being harassed by the same spirit. So she actually got a priest to come in and mm -hmm. uh, paranormal investigators. And when yep. they went there, they actually could feel like a burn on their chest. And the next day when they, at home, they had actual blisters. So they like refused to go back. So for mm -hmm. her, she was wondering like, what could she do? In, in... Uh, a house clearing would be really ideal. So mm -hmm. um, somebody, if she knew somebody, and you might even be able to find this through uh, the spiritual center that you go to, Jeff. Um, yeah. If she could find somebody that can hold a frequency to help communicate with that spirit. Because here's the thing, is spirits will show themselves in a lot of different ways. And I truly, 100% believe that all spirits are pure in heart. Some of them, just like all humans, technically have a pure heart. Some have had yeah. troubled life, which has caused them to choose to do negative things. But the essence of them is pure, just like spirit. We're all from source, right? Yeah. So... It's really about having somebody that can hold a frequency long enough and calm enough to communicate with that spirit to see what it is they actually need to hear or express and then help them to cross over. Because I've had spirits come up to me with the most warped uh, visuals, you name it. I'm not going to explain yeah. it all here, but it's really their way of getting attention because what they're really wanting is to communicate something, truly. Yeah. And so yeah. it's kind of, if you think about it, like sometimes kids will act out right? They'll act out, but what they're really wanting is someone to get on their level and say, what did you need? Are you yeah. okay? And so oftentimes, if you have somebody that can hold a frequency long enough or without fear to confront that spirit and talk to them, you know, face to face, heart to heart, and see yeah. what it is they really need, then that spirit will choose to cross. It's yeah. just sometimes we end up coming at it with fear. And then when we come at it with fear, we just accentuate the fear that's already building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my dog's, my poor thing's got a splint on her leg and she's running. She's oh, like, no. <laughs> and all he hears a little pig running. Oh, uh, so could that be too, like, someone wasn't ready to leave. They're stuck in that residence. They don't want to leave. People move in and then they start harassing them because it's like, you're in my place now. What are you doing? So they're just yeah. trying to freak them out to. Yeah, in some cases, that, that's it. Um, it really is just a matter of communicating. Like, if we... If we decide we're not afraid of the spirits, just like yep. we can communicate with humans, if we decide we're not afraid and we're willing to actually see what's going on, um, then yep. we can actually learn a lot and change the energy. If we come yep. at it from love, and I know some people are going to be like, oh, sure, yeah, just love them. Um, 
but that's honestly, how I'm at. that's where I'm at now though. It's true. It's true because yeah. spirit yeah. is not limited to the density um, of a human body or the brain of a human body, even though sometimes they're sort of stuck in that frequency. But if we show them a love energy, then we can change their frequencies for them to see the light. So there's a lot that we can do with spirit. So it's a matter of love, really. Yeah. 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 Because when I do it, the only, my intention when I'm um, drawing spirit to, like to me is that it's always peace and love. Yeah. So it's always positive energy. I never yeah. have had a bad experience. And yeah. other mediums, like at the church, you know, they've always had good experiences. They've never had a negative experience themselves. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah. And, and like, there, um, there can be experiences that could be perceived as scary. I'm going to put that out there because I've had a few where they approach in a certain way. But again, I got to say, if you choose not to react in fear and acknowledge them as a being of love, they flip yeah. instantly into their pure source. They do. Like, they can show up with a warped visual. And if I say, what is it you really want? They will all of a sudden shift back into John Smith, the next door neighbor who uh, passed away mowing his lawn. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not, we don't need to be fearing it. There's, there's yeah. such an emphasis on fearing it. And I really want to yeah. kind of get that point across. It's because like we can't, a lot of people, they can't see it, but they feel it and they're afraid because it's yeah. unknown. Exactly. It's something different, yeah. right? And, yeah. and that's quite common. That, that's one of the first things that most people have to kind of overcome is that choice of being afraid or not, which I did too, right? Like with my cat, yeah. like I said, with my cat in the hallway, I then chose to not be afraid anymore. When she saw yeah. my guide, I said, that's it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to learn. And, yeah. and that's, that goes along with the point that you said is when you're starting to open up to spirit, you have the capacity, and this is something someone had to teach me too, you have the capacity to set parameters. You know, so for me, the scariest thing when I was younger was having spirit in my room at night. I didn't like that. So my rule was don't come in and see me after 9 o'clock at night until 9 in the morning unless mm -hmm. it's a family emergency. Otherwise, don't bother me because it freaks me out and I'll shut it down, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so with those parameters, they really honor it because, again, they want us to work with them, right? Yeah. And so it's okay to set those parameters. Um, yeah. Another one I had, too, when I first started seeing spirit often was I said, please don't come more than an arm's length away from my face. Don't, don't yes. show up in my face. That's what I worry about, too. Yeah. 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 So you just tell them, like, what yeah. you're comfortable with, and they'll abide by that until yeah. you're no longer afraid anymore. Yeah. Sean brought up a good point too. He appreciated how you brought up that uh, to validate that other people can be mediums as well, or that you have the ability. I, I think is what he meant. So yeah. It's like a lot of people don't realize that we were at, we are all the same, but we yeah. like we have the ability to if we open ourselves up to it. Yeah, more. we do. Right? We do. And you know, everybody, it's so true. Like we all have the ability to do anything, really. Some of us come in with a more natural ability than others, but it doesn't mean we all can't learn. And that's why we have teachers on this planet. That's why we have written word of steps on how to. That's why we have scriptures and books and grimoires and family stories and cultural stories are all to teach people how to open up to the natural gifts we have. You know, yeah. so some, some people might find that they're more naturally um, a healer. You know, and some people might find that they're very naturally intuitive. They don't see spirit, yeah. but boy, do they know stuff, you know, and yeah. all of those gifts like to work in harmony. So although I consider myself more of a medium, I too have had experiences in which I've helped facilitate healing, you know. Yeah. So, yes, we all we all have the ability and the capacity to do it in some form. Um, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, there's, geez, good, a few questions here. <laughs> uh, there, Natasha was asking, if you feel a calling to connect with spirit and people that have passed, um, passed, and you always have a high level of anxiety, should you not ignore it? Yeah, and you know, I would imagine that if you're feeling the pull of, with spirit and in mediumship, however you would define it, your anxiety and again, this is case by case, so I can't just answer a blanket statement of this is exactly what it is. I can give you the generalized idea. More often than not, that anxiety is a result of you picking up on spiritual energies around you. Because again, they are a higher frequency 
coming to your body and your body's desire, no matter what, is to harmonize frequencies. So like yeah. if I put her by an electrical, big, huge electrical panel, she'd probably feel yeah. that same anxiety because it's a higher frequency. So if there's more spirit energies around her, then she will most likely um, be picking up on that. And if we don't know what it is, then we do interpret it as anxiety for sure. Yeah. So what I would recommend trying in that case is for her to, when she feels that anxiety come up, say in her mind or out loud, say, okay, if this is spirit, please take this energy away for a moment just so I can feel the difference. And she'll probably feel them leave. And even if it's for a second or two or longer, she'll feel absolute calm. And then it might come right back, but she'll have yeah. that differentiation. And that differentiation is what's going to give her that capacity to feel in control of that anxiety feeling. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got? Andrea was asking, share the driving thing where spirits take over your body while driving and you have to ask them not to do this. I did it the other day and was finally able to drive without panic attacks. Oh, yes. Yeah, so sometimes this... <laughs> This one is a little complex because there's a lot of variables in how this happens. But um, sometimes people will have like an out-of-body experience, right? So you're conscious in your daily life, but your, your spirit self, right? Because our spirit is, is everything. And our physical bodies are the densest part of our spirit, which is why we have an aura, right? Our spirit expands yeah. outward. So sometimes our spirits can be very multifaceted and a piece of us, or a percentage of us can be busy somewhere else. And I know for some people that's like, what? That doesn't make sense. Mm. So just, just follow me. So sometimes when needed, a bigger part of us can be drawn somewhere else. And I've had a situation before where I don't know what spirit was trying to teach me, but it wasn't really the right timing in which they pulled me outside of my car. I was driving my car and they pulled me outside and I looked and there I am driving inside. And I was like, wait a minute. And when right back in my body and so what they were trying to show me was this differentiation for this um, multifacetedness of the spirit in consciousness yeah. but there sometimes they don't quite recognize when it is the right time and when it's not so in that case I was like no. don't ever do this when I'm driving not a good no. time right and no. I know somebody else who's had a similar experience um, of it happening when driving. So again, setting those parameters, saying to spirit, yeah. like, now is not the time. Let me have this to be fully conscious, yeah. and they will. And, it won't and they abide by it. They always stick they to do. whatever you intend. Yeah. They do. Yeah, they never want to instill fear. They just, they want to work with us. They totally yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Rachel, is it possible that spirit frequency changes just like my, just like my relaxed frequency changes? Sometimes I feel like I, I can feel people better at different times. But I don't know if this makes sense. <laughs> so, like, um, spirit frequency. So, uh, okay, I can maybe answer it this way. Maybe this will make sense. So, okay. when spirit crosses, um, they have to kind of reconnect with their higher selves. And when they reconnect with their higher selves, which is everything and anything they have ever been, right? Because when we yeah. come into a lifetime, we live a piece of our our higher self identity and then we return to it. So there is a process of returning to that higher frequency. And if they're not quite there yet or they have traumas that they're having to release, then they will be in a lower frequency on the other side. But usually once they return to that higher self frequency, they maintain that frequency. Oh, okay. So it's different in terms of spirit. People, on the other hand, change frequencies all the time, all throughout the day, depending on stress, energy levels, food, you name it. So I yeah. hope that kind of answers a okay, little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, what do we have here? Oh, I touched the wrong button. I ha <laughs> um, she thinks that her guide is her grandfather. I have not heard from him in a long time. Is there something I can do to get him to help me? I really need him right now. Absolutely. You can call him in. Um, call him in with a request for validating his presence somehow, whether that be through number patterns, animal symbolism, songs, um, you name it. If there was a thing, say you and your grandfather had a song or there was a song that reminded you of your grandfather, if you asked him, like, please, so that I know you're around, play that song somewhere. And then you might find in the next day or so it's on a commercial and then it's on the radio and then, you know, somebody mentions it or something, 
And mm. especially if you get the signs in threes, if something happens to you in threes, that's a really mm. prominent way to really believe the proof of what they're trying to bring through. So it's really about asking and putting it out there what you would like, and then yeah. allowing the universe to show you how they're going to manifest it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, two questions kind of the same. Please more about, or please explain more about spirit guides. Um, I've had this ability since birth and have never felt my guide. And then another person, same kind of question was like, how do we know or how do we find out who our guides are? Okay. So um, one way is you can talk to a medium who can connect you with them, right? That's one simple way. Um, for yourselves individually would be to, if you can meditate, and some people, like Jeff said, some people meditation is easier than others. If you can find a way to meditate, whether that be actually sitting with your eyes closed, legs crossed, whether it be listening to music, whether it be painting or sculpting, something that's keeping your, your left brain busy so your right brain can go, um, allows for meditation. So whatever that might be for you, if you can drop into that energy and then in that energy ask your guides to come forward, uh, the more you do this, the more you're going to start to create a language or communication with them. So usually it'll start with you being able to feel a presence, right? And the more you do it, you'll start to recognize the energy of that presence. And, 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 and then, believing what you're feeling too, right? It's not doubting. Don't doubt it. Believe yeah. what you're feeling. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then, um, you know, once you recognize that presence, you might start to see uh, any time that guide comes in, you might see uh, a dove in your mind's eye or you might see whatever it might be. It's acknowledging the signs and symbols and feelings and putting mm -hmm. them together, or you might find you're just able to see them, or you're able to see an outline. There's, there's yeah. so many ways that it can manifest. It's being open to what those are, but repeating the practice. Because, yes, some of us can come in and see spirit really well, but we all still have to develop a practice of to what the interpretation means, how we see them. Um, it's a constant learning. So yeah. for me to say exactly what I do will apply to you or anybody else, isn't accurate it's really discovering it what it is for you yeah so but that repeated yeah. practice with acknowledgement of the things you're seeing and believing it uh, will yeah. help you create that uh communication yeah yeah that's awesome um one oh a point someone else said was scamming the biggest thing with skeptics and stuff and i think it's like even with a doctor you have good doctors and you have bad doctors Right, yeah, yeah. you have people mm -hmm. that are good me at what they at their, their abilities with what they're able to do with mediumship, and then mm -hmm. you have others that are out there ripping people off, giving yeah, the good mediums a bad name, right? So yeah. how do you how do you try to like I think she was asking how do you try to pick if you know they're good or not? Well, I mean, the best advice I was ever given yeah. is word of mouth. So if yeah. you recommended somebody, yeah. that that's your best way. Um, yeah. Because anybody who truly is a medium who wants to just give the messages, be that middle person, um, they won't be trying to sell you some $900 uh, set of stones you need to buy to clear your aura. That, that's yeah. something that's a big red light. Um, somebody that, you know, forces you down one straight path of how it should be or has to be, again, that's a big red light to me because what I've learned is it's so interpretive. There's so many ways to go about it and there's so many ways to have success. So for it to be like, this is the one way, um, that would be a no for me. That would be a big no. Um, you can look online and, you know, see reviews anywhere that you could find reviews of some people might be beneficial, but honestly, the best way to go about it Word is of mouth. Word of mouth, and then your feeling when you see them, yeah. how you resonate with what they're saying and the validity in the reading. So I guess another big thing too that comes to my mind is that when you're with a medium, if they're, they're, you'll know for sure in concrete if they bring up things that only you know with the loved one that they have yeah. experiences with. If they're only saying, yeah. oh, I see an angel behind you, they look beautiful, you know, giving you that kind of spiel without yeah. no actual fact of what was connected with you and that person, I think that would be a big giveaway too, right? You know, and that's such a good point because that's what usually happens. Anyone that I haven't done a reading for before, um, the first part of the reading, I always say to them, like, don't tell me what it is you want to know yet or what you're looking for. Let's just let spirit come in and show you what you need to know because they already know it. 
And so that gives them the opportunity to just, we've had no, like, I don't know what it is they want, right? And it's not my job to know what they want. It's just my job to be the middleman to communicate it. And then that really proves to them what's coming through. And I think that's an important thing. I think if somebody, one thing I would be wary of is if somebody asked me to fill out a big questionnaire full of information, I would be wondering why, because a medium should be able to facilitate that information that is needed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Well, I know for you, meeting you was from other close friends that we have. Yeah. And anyone that knows who you are, you know, I've only heard the best of things about you. Uh, um, that's, how you that's true. And like you've done, you've helped our entire family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the experience that I got from uh, two sessions, I think, with you, it's, it's life changing in a way. You have such a more um, understanding of things about your life that like with myself, it helped me in a lot of different ways just by having my, you know, the, the session that I had with you for an hour. I know, especially with my mom and my sisters, you know, you've mm -hmm. helped them so much that, you know, people think, oh, you're making money off it or whatever. It's like, you can't put a price on what you're able to do with helping other people. There's no real price mm -hmm. that you can put on it. It's life changing. Mm -hmm. And, well, that, you know, yeah. and how it's changed my life, I actually like, that's why I want to give one, you know, for a person who writes their name down here and comments their name and then shares this video, I was going to do one, but I'm going to pay for two people that I want to have oh, the experience gonna... with you because it's truly, there's no price you can put on to get the experience with how you could, how you help and heal people. So. Well, that's, that's so kind of you to say, and I'm really honored and yeah. And I appreciate that. But I also got to say, like, I really am, I'm honored to have the gift. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. it's a beautiful space to hold. And I, am, I have gratitude for that every session, every session before yeah. I go in, I give gratitude to that. Um, but I think the, the best part of it is being able to show people what is there, right? And when we believe in something more, and myself included, when I decided to believe in what was happening to me, yeah. life got a lot brighter because a lot of fear gets taken away. And so to be able to share that with other people, to be a ripple, create a ripple, yeah. for them to create a ripple, to then create yeah. more ripples of this awareness and open-mindedness is really what fuels this passion to share it. You yeah. know what I mean? To, to make those... Oh, to make that uh, reachable to people. And I believe that's what we all are meant to do in our ways. So just like what you're doing with these videos, Jeff, and what you're trying to teach with what you know is the same thing. It's creating these ripples to create a change of consciousness. And that, yeah. like, that's money right there. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, great. There we go. Okay, awesome. Thank you for coming on. I mean, I, your pleasure. time is, yeah, I, it's awesome that you came on. I know everyone loved watching you and hearing from you. I always do. Um, Wonderful. So, yeah, so you can do, so people realize, you know, if, even when you're in the States watch, or, uh, watching the video, um, she, you, you do over Skype and Facebook Messenger too, the videos? Yeah, I've uh, talked to people all over the world. I've done reading yeah. um, all over the world. So we're not, the beautiful thing with our technology is we're not limited at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it works just the same. Some people ask, like, well, is the phone reading the same quality as if I'm sitting in front of you? And, and honestly, spirit is not limited to time or space. It doesn't matter where they are. If I'm reading for somebody, uh, like I did a reading for a lady in Scotland, spirit was with me and her at the same time because they can be. There's no limitation for them. So yeah. it's just as, um, it's just the same. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, when uh, I do card readings for people sometimes, I don't yeah. actually have them around me. I connect yeah. with their energy. So it's just me connecting with their energy. They don't need to be next to you. You know, for myself, I look at their photos quickly on Facebook and I connect with their energy. And then when I do my cards, uh, they're 99% uh, accurate all the time when I do them. It's because yeah, they are. You, don't, you don't need to be right next to them and you can yeah. still always connect with our energy with each other, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So thank you for coming on. Okay, well, thanks <laughs> so much. And, yeah, and I loved everyone's questions. So thank you. And